This video is made possible by Practical Defense Systems, the best online security training at the lowest prices. You can start your security career today online at pdsclasses.com. Check them out. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. It's time for the Gun Guy TV podcast. Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for listening to my podcast and supporting Gun Guy TV the way you do. I'm very, very grateful. Obviously, scheduling has gone to pot where the podcast is concerned, as well as a few other things, you know, with the whole COVID-19 stay-at-home thing in the state of California. It's kind of thrown our schedule off quite a bit. So as a result, whenever I can do a serious interview with somebody, I'm going to do it. And that's what I did on the 20th with Eric Pratt from Gun Owners of America. And so that put my podcast a couple of days late. So I'm actually doing the podcast on the 22nd when it was actually due two days ago. And I apologize for that, but we'll get it out today. And uh, hopefully we can stay on schedule. It just all depends on how this stuff shakes loose with the COVID-19 thing. Now, once again, with the podcast, we're back to having the first half of the podcast publicly available on your favorite podcast player. And then we'll also post it on the various and sundry video platforms as well, so that if you don't want to listen to it on a podcast pl podcast player, you can find it in video form on YouTube and uh, Gun Streamer and Bit Shoot, which I always have to say carefully, and the Utah Gun Exchange, Facebook, Vimeo, and, uh, and on GunGuy.tv, for that matter. So it'll be up there as well. The second half of the podcast is going to be on Patreon only. That's a uh, kind of a special thing I do for my Patreon supporters. Now, what we're going to cover in the first part of the podcast is an interview that I did at SHOT Show with Dennis Roman and the staff at the P2K range in El Cajon, California. I've been a member of that range since before they built the building there, which has been about 30 years or something, and I know Dennis very well, and I actually teach at that range quite frequently. It's an outstanding range. It's actually got a 100-yard indoor range, which is kind of cool. But it is also interesting to hear about the struggles they go through with the state of California. One of the reasons I want to put these interviews up for you is to get away from the COVID-19 stuff. At some point, it just becomes all pervasive, and it's nice to escape it. So instead, we're going to do that interview for you that was done at SHOT Show. We had fun with it, and hopefully you will as well. And then in the second part of the podcast on Patreon only, I'm going to talk a little bit about what it's like to grow up learning how to shoot and my experiences as a boy learning how to shoot with my grandfather and my father and, uh, and others, uncles, aunts, and cousins, and so on, and why I firmly believe as a result that shooting, hunting, and everything that goes with the shooting sports, as well as self-defense and the primary reason for our Second Amendment, is part of the American culture and part of the American way of life. And it's very important that we never lose that. But before we get started with the interview, let me remind you that one way you can support Gun Guy TV is to shop using our Amazon link. It costs you absolutely nothing. And in an environment where a lot of folks are out of work, it's a good thing when things cost absolutely nothing. In order to help us out in that regard, you can go to our website at gunguy.tv and just look for the Amazon banner on the top. When you see that shopping Amazon banner on the top, if you click on it, it will take you to the Amazon site using our Amazon link. Then all you have to do is bookmark that site with that link, and every time you go to Amazon, if you use that bookmark, you can buy whatever you want. Your Amazon Prime will work. Everything works the same way. It costs you absolutely nothing, but Amazon pays us a little marketing fee, and it does help out a ton. So please use our Amazon link when you shop Amazon. Let's get started with the interview with Dennis Roman and the folks at P2K. Dennis Roman, it's very good to have you here, and you brought Ken and Susan with you. Uh, Ken, you know, eh, but we're very glad that Susan is here. <laughs> I got to give Ken some grief here when I see him once in a while. What's going on, what's going on with the P2K range now? Well, we're 97 years old. So, 97? 97 this year. Wow, so that's cool. Three years away from our centennial. That'll be kind of neat. Yeah, that will be kind of neat. That's yeah. A, that's, a that's a day to celebrate. In California, that even tops it off, too. Well, how you've survived the last few years, I can't tell you. I mean, they've been after you kind of consistently for about the last 10, it seems, hasn't it? Yeah, things have uh, stabilized a little bit. So we uh, have to learn new ways to do things and adjust and come up with procedures for them and make sure that all the 
people who want to attack you are happy with what we're doing. They're not happy, but at least it's, you know, we're trying to learn how to play their game better. Now you fend them off at some point. I'm not altogether sure that California gun owners realize the, the struggles that ranges in California go through. What, what kind of stuff do you guys have to fight in California on a regular basis that in a free state like where Richard is out there in Arizona that he wouldn't have to deal with? We just have uh, a lot more agencies that pay attention to us. And since there's only 11 ranges in San Diego, that when you have two full-time people, it doesn't take very long to cycle through all them from a hazardous materials division or um, environmental division. And I, to be the thing that we have the biggest fear of and our, probably our biggest enemy in the future is going to be environmental. The environmental stuff is constantly getting tighter and changing. There's a new law that just came out, and it's effective uh, January 1st, that if you have your blood drawn and you test 20 or above uh, micrograms per deciliter, that it's an automatic three-day OSHA visit. So I'm not talking about just for shooting ranges, but if you're a shooter and you work at Joe's Crab Shack and you end up uh, going over 20, they're going to go to Joe's and hammer them for an automatic OSHA inspection. And you never win. And there, But you... Okay. It has nothing. Of course, the fact that you you pop this level of lead in your system has nothing to do with Joe's Crab Shack. So you're right, but that's the new law. So interesting. Uh, welcome to the People's so- Socialist Republic of California. Yeah. In spite of all of this, I've been a member of P2K since before the building was built. I don't know how many years ago that was, but it was over a long twenty. Time. It was before Ken was born. Uh, it was, I'm sure. No, yeah, I doubt yeah, that very yeah, seriously. Very close. Very close. <laughs> was it close? I was kidding. No, I think I, I think it was, was b- before both of them were. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember been. when you used to tie your horse up when you got there. No, it was a Shetland pony. I couldn't <laughs> afford a horse. <laughs> oh, you, you guys should tell a story about when they came out with sliced bread. That'd be great. Yeah, you should have seen me dragging my feet along the ground and sitting on the pony because <laughs> I'm too stinking tall. No, I've been a member there a long time, and, and it, the range has come along tremendously since you took over as general manager. So I want to compliment you on that. Thank you very much. It's a Dennis. It's a totally different range than it was the day you came. Uh, so I, you know, I don't tell you that very often. So I'm going to tell you now publicly, you've done a tremendous job. We're, we're not paying range. for sponsorship. No, I know that. And I'm just, I'm just, telling, I'm just telling the truth. I'm just telling the truth. What, what's new at P2K that you might want to let people know about? Well, the last uh, 24 months, we put that members-only range that's only for members. That's been a pretty big hit. We have that virtual target system, V23. That's been really well. We've had very successful leagues with it, so we we really enjoy that. They both have, you, they both have shot the leagues. Susan, and, are you still beating everybody on the virtual range like you were the day I was there? I'm not beating everybody, but I'm giving it my best shot. <laughs> she was skunking everybody. It was it was hilarious. I loved it. That was great. And that's that's pretty much the newest stuff that we have. So there's you know. Right now, it's trying to keep your head above water with all the challenges that have been out there and the downturn in the shooting industry and the oversaturation from the Obama years. So now it's just kind of recollecting and run, you know, running a business again and trying to figure out what product mix works and how you compete against online and a lot of those types of things. And then our, uh, our firearm selection is diminishing every year because of the California list. I mean... Well, now they've made it, the whole ammo thing has got to be a little bit of a nightmare for you guys, too, isn't it? If you shoot at the range, you don't have to do anything. You just have to bring back the empty box to us, so you don't do a background if you have that. So for the people who are coming in that rent, that, that isn't affecting them, but for sales, it affects it. And, you know, it takes 15 minutes to do a transaction. So when you're selling a $15 box of ammo and it takes 15 minutes to do it labor-wise, and then you have to print four sheets of paper and take a photocopy ID, and do we get a thumbprint? We don't get at them. Okay. Whatever it is, I mean, it's like, oh, you know, do we raise the cost of ammo to cover the labor that's on there? Where, where do, where's the where's the delta on it? I don't know what the, where that is yet. So we're just kind of living with it, seeing how it goes. And But the, I'd say the biggest challenge we have is all the firearms we have are 50, at least 15-year-old technology, if not 20-year-old technology. And we don't get that customers like the rest of the states have where they see something in the in the magazine they go oh my gosh i want that that is so cool and they come in and then we have to explain to them uh no you kind of missed out on that uh they're not legal well, why aren't they legal in california where have you been yeah what planet <laughs> are you living in yeah it's got to be an interesting thing for you to, for you to 
guys to come to SHOT Show, walk around and see all this stuff and realize that you can't get it. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's like a, an entire parade for four days of stuff that you can't get, that you can't sell. Yeah. How weird is that? Well, there were some Beanie Babies and a couple other things that were out there that are, you know. <laughs> well, okay, hold it up. What did you get over here that you got? You got her brought a stuffed toy with she us. She actually had that made. That's a record. Oh, you had that made? I drew, this is Primer. You can follow him on Instagram at Primer209. Oh. And I drew him and I sent him to Budsies and then they created him. So he's a little stuffed raccoon and he's our little range mascot and he does little funny little things. At the range, and you can see it all on Instagram. But he's a mascot. We do not use him as a target. We do not no. use him as a target. Although there's a lot of people that make jokes about that, but I will beat them down. <laughs> yeah, well, she. I've seen you shoot. <laughs> I'm not going to make jokes about using him as a target. That's a terrible, terrible thing. The opinions expressed by the gun guy are always right, unless they're wrong. Ken, how long have you been working at the range now? Uh, going on 11 years now. Wow, really? Yeah. I remember when you started. I'm getting old. My daughter just turned 13. Oh, I, my gosh. I, I, I really? Feel old too, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And how long have you been working at the range now? I've been there since 2004. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. Long time. Yep. Yeah. I think Nick was in middle school or elementary. Nick wasn't born yet at that point. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Nick. <laughs> He was in high school, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Elementary, that would be nice. Yeah, no, that would make me uh, no. That would make me younger. Oh, Ooh, yeah, yeah. Dennis. That's maybe a, I nope. should say he was in elementary school. Yes. I don't really know. How's the show going for you so far? It's been very good. It's it's been very good. So we, uh, you know, looking at some new products that we can actually bring into California. We just found some pretty neat nine millimeter ARs that they're going to configure for us to be able to use because we don't have any nine millimeters for sale. Uh. So ATI is going to do some stuff for us that uh, with the polymer receivers where we can have a, a price point AR, which we haven't been able to do. And, uh, you know, try to push some more ARs back out there that people enjoy and even with the limitations on them. So, yeah, because they got to be California tweaked. You know, my correct. AR is not recognizable in any other state. Yes. Although CMMG sent me their 9mm conversion thing with the PMAGs. Yes. That's a very cool product. That's a very cool product. If I've, I've got one if you want to play with it, if you don't have one already. You showed it to me before you shot it, and you hadn't shot it yet, so it's yeah, interesting well, to see I've how that... Yeah, I've probably put 1,000 rounds through that thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's, that thing runs like a Swiss watch. And is it using their own mags? It uses they Glock sent me mags? The, they sent me their own mags, but they'll also... No, no, it, it uses P mags, it, uh, 556 mags. Oh. There's a... Yeah. Well, that's right. So you can, you can either get the mag from them, or you can... Uh, they'll send an insert, and you just basically t take the... the uh, the floor plate off, take the spring and follower out, and insert theirs, put the floor plate back on the mag, and if you got a Gen 2 or greater or, or newer P mag, it converts your P mag immediately. Oh, hmm. And it converts it automatically to 10 rounds, so it's California California legal. There's a little thing in there you can, if you're in a free state, you can clip it and, you know, and increase that, that, uh, that number, but I mean, pretty much it's a 10 round mag. Hmm. There you are. Or it's not a 10-round mag because you bought it during Freedom Week. But then that's a whole different yeah, conversation we don't need to talk about. I didn't mention that. Did I mention that? No, I would never say such a thing. I take that back. Not me. Well, so, hopefully Freedom Week extends after they go back uh, and hear well, it again. Well, I don't know. Judge Benitez, I, we had uh, Chuck Michelle here earlier, and he was ho he was very hopeful about that. Really? So I thought the, the news from him was very good. So we'll see, we'll see how that turns out. But he seemed to be very hopeful about some of the stuff at the Supreme Court, obviously the New York case. And some of the things that are sitting with the Ninth Circuit now that the, the, the structure of that court has changed a lot because of Trump. So he seemed to be, he was very positive. So really? That's more positive than I've heard him be in a, on a lot of things. Hmm. So that was, that was very good. good. So I thought that was pretty good. I'm the, hoping for those, a lot of those things to change. The anyhow. problem is once they, everything I've seen the past 10 years, once they say, yes, it's okay, you never hear about it again. It gets tied up in some legal, you know, we were, and I don't know where this is at. We were supposed to get rid of the 10-day uh, uh, 10, 24-hour period, waiting period, and they were talking about uh, if you had a CCW, you would be able to buy in and walk out if you already had a CCW. Right, I don't know where that went. Then we don't either, and it's it's one of those mysteries like, well, they said they overturned it. Where'd it go? And no one can answer the question. Yeah, I've been trying to buy a gun and walk out all that time, and neither Susan nor Ken will <laughs> let me do it. <laughs> you can get that handgun from Traditions, that black powder gun. Yeah. Well, you know, I did buy a uh, an M1. Because I have a CNR, 
So I was able to buy that and just take it because of, and I just had to put it in my put it in my book and and give the guy a. So that was kind of cool. But I mean, other than CNR guns, I can't do it. No, it is and what it is. How many of those are left out there? Well, how many and how many am I going to buy? <laughs> right? yeah. I mean, you know, most of those are getting scooped up by other people. Well, and in the midst of all of this, though, the range is awesome. So if you haven't been to the P2K range and you're listening to this, I urge you, if you're in San Diego, you got to go. It's a fabulous range. It's out in East County. And uh, you can go golfing and go shooting in the same day because there are great golf courses out there, too. Yeah, two courses within a mile and a half. Um, we have the 100-yard indoor range for long guns, and we have 25-yard uh, anything range, rifle, pistol, shotgun, and black powder. And then we have the uh, two clay target ranges outside with trap and a five-stand overlay. Which so is very, very cool. Yeah. That's my son's favorite part is the whole trap thing, and I don't, I don't blame him. The only thing he doesn't like about trap and skeet like that is that Susan regularly outshoots him, and that's the problem. But it is what it is. I can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. I, I know that trying to keep the lights on and like that in California is kind of tough. Do you have plans for the future for the range to do neat things to it once, once money becomes available? <sighs> well, we want to... Our next probably major thing is to redo the layout inside the, uh, the store because it's a little bit confusing for somebody new to come through. So we, we want to have it a little bit more friendly when you come into it. We just put some new lighted signs in and upgraded those so they look a lot better than they did before. When you're coming up in the evening hours, you know where you're going instead of with the rope lights that we had on them before. So now yeah. they're like, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they are with the bugs in the summer. But um, One thing I want to compliment you on, Dennis, and I know I'm complimenting you a lot, but I... I Attend, I'm at a lot of ranges, as you might imagine. Ranges, a lot of times, in gun stores tend to be populated by good old boy gun people. The gun guys. Right. <laughs> and, and so, Ken, how does that, other than the gun guys like me, I mean, how does that affect customers? It, you know, when I think about it, I think you got to, somebody wants to buy a gun or they want to go shooting for the first time and they walk into a place and they're not always, they're not always treated with open arms. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys don't do that. How did you get there? How did you how did you come upon the idea of being more, what would you call it, family friendly maybe, or new shooter well, friendly? Customer service orientated. You know, listen to what the customer has. Uh, you know, my whole as a management philosophy, I try not to hire anybody from any industry because they usually already have some type of regiment that they're used to doing. So it's very difficult to teach them to be nice. So if I hire somebody who... Well, nice at a gun store? Yeah, well, I... I nice I'm, at a range? Yeah. That's a foreign concept, isn't it? <laughs> so we try to hire people who have good customer service skills and then teach them more about the firearm stuff. And that, and it seems to... It works. I mean, to, as much as it can. Uh, several people have worked for me, never touched a firearm before they came there, and now they're deputy sheriffs or they work for La Mesa PD or some of the other things where they didn't... They never had any idea of commercial firearm stuff. So that... And, you know... Some of the customers get upset over that because they may not be as knowledgeable, but at least they're being treated with respect and they're not being hounded on the, whatever the salesperson happens to be hawking that week with the, I use a Glock, you need to use a Glock yeah, mentality. Yeah, their personal bias or yes. whatever they've got. Yeah. So That makes life easier. I've, I've always been impressed by the fact that new shooters come into the range and seem to be and feel, feel comfortable there. And that's not always the case wherever you go. I mean, a lot of times you go to ranges and that isn't the case at all. So. Yeah, we, I mean, and we always treat the new shooters like everyone has to start there. Everyone, everyone who's ever shot has to start there. And it blows our minds when they come in and they say, hey, I went to this other range and they wouldn't let us shoot there unless we got some classes first. And it's like, okay. So in order to, you know, go, it, it just, it defies logic that you wouldn't want to go help them out to be, have the best experience they can. Well, and I've yeah. seen you do that. I've seen Ken do it. I've seen Susan do it on the range, helping people that have no idea which end of the gun the bullet comes out of and, you know, making them safe. Well, if you ever saw me, thanks, because I usually try to stay in my office as much as possible. Yeah, I know you're a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do see you periodically. Don't yeah. know to mention it. I, oh, Joel's here. Okay. Yeah, I'll go out and be nice to him. What the heck? Shooting straight and always right on target. This is the Gun Guy TV Podcast. So you've done a lot of changes with the trap range. So if somebody's listening hasn't been to P2K in, a, in three or four years, what's changed with that? Well, the road's paved <laughs> all the way up, including the parking lot. Yeah, yeah there for a while it was kind of part gravel. Yeah, yes. that's true. And, there, and for many, many years it was just dirt. Yeah. 
that was quite an accomplishment. You know, when I got there and I told them what the plans were and we drew everything up and said, this is what we want to do. I can remember a lot of people saying it will never, you'll never get the road paved. You'll never get the parking lot paved. You'll never have running water, all these types of things they have. And now it's like, hey, we have running water. Hey, we you'll have never have actual bathrooms. I remember yeah. where the porta potties were there. We shut up against the hillside. Yes. So, I mean, it's a totally different world. So, yeah, that cleanup stuff has been great. Uh, the trap ranges, uh, the equipment has, has been maintained better, so we're not having as many down things as there used to be. And we upgrade a lot. We got rid of a lot of the older machines. It's been a few years, and we're trying to keep more newer machines in. And as they start aging out, get rid of them sooner than try to band-aid them and put them together. Uh, we do have some new voice pool equipment uh, on the lower range. And we have new voice pool equipment that in the next month or so will be installed on the upper range. So when the individual shooter comes out, I don't have to have an employee standing there the entire time pushing the button. And I know people like that, but with the cost of labor in California and all the overhead, it's really beginning to make quite a difference. It almost makes it not worth having the shotgun range after a while if you're not careful. It's tough to do because the shotgun range, is they're, they're really more of a loss leader. By the time you get the cost of the machines, the electricity, the insurance, the, the, plot, of, the plot of land they take in there, and, and the birds, and those have gone up, up, up. Right. So that's been that's been a challenge. Yeah. So, but we're glad it's there. People enjoy it. We do have leagues. The leagues have been exciting. We usually run a, between four and five leagues a year, and they've had uh, they've had real good success. Not and then our uh, our V twenty three league that virtual target league has worked out really well. Oh too. wait a minute, you have a league for the virtual yeah. target? Well, that's cool. Tuesday evenings, yeah. the next one starts uh, next week, next Tuesday, which is twenty uh, eighth or something like that, twenty eighth, mm-hmm. and uh, it's that's been great. Eight weeks, the guys come out, they shoot multiple games, and the scores are very very close on there. You have to have at least at least four magazines. So it, it's a lot of fun. That it's is, a, it's a good like group a of, of people. Yeah, that sounds like a lot so of fun. I, now, Ken, have you done it? Yeah. Are you winning? He uh, got second in the last one. Came in second and, last and, one. And you came in first? No, no they, they can't shoot it together. We don't participate oh, together. Yeah. Oh, okay. We alternate. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it would be too close to call for everybody else. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> nobody nobody gets a score at all. That's and I'm finally at the point where I'm probably going to buy a firearm for my first time, and then I'll be able to go out and shoot the league, too. Yeah, I... I didn't know that you were ever a shooter, Dennis. I didn't know that you could shoot. Actually, what you don't know about Dennis Roman is you—you like, you don't get to shoot that much anymore. But no. I do remember a day when you were a phenomenal shot. But it is a little bit like uh, like riding a bicycle, hopefully. So mm. if you get to shoot a little bit. That'd be kind of nice. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we're out of time or not. I don't think we are. I'm kind of minding the time because they're gonna—we're here in the press room at uh, Shot Show, and they're gonna ask us to be quiet because they got to do their their award thing but we do have about five or six minutes left what what would you like if you had an opportunity to tell people who don't have never been to p2k before what would you tell them that we're family friendly that's one thing for sure Mm -hmm. we do bachelor parties and birthday parties and re-enlistment parties and uh, a lot of corporate events for people that come out Uh, we do have agencies that use the facility so there's a lot of open space for that Uh, we have a full fully stocked store where we have over 600 guns on display um, all California compliant. Which means so, you have the same gun 600 yeah, times. That's right, <laughs> yes. Uh, the fact that you got that you found 600 California compliant guns is a yes. piece. So good for you. Then we stock most calibers of ammunition. Uh, and we have a lot of accessories in there. And we have Wi-Fi if you're waiting or want to hang out. A bunch of TVs running if you're bored. Yes, right. so yeah. a, lot of, a lot of visual media. And uh, largest it, indoor range in San Diego County, aren't you? You still got that moniker, or, or somebody else get it? Somebody else largest, got that. Hi, yeah, but the you know what? Hybrid facility. Oh, okay. I knew there was a way on the West Coast. On the West mm-hmm. Coast. Okay. Yeah, for an indoor outdoor, we are the largest facility. That's pretty cool. So there, everyone else is either outdoor or indoor, and we have both put together, which makes it nice. And you know, it's climate controlled, so people are coming out. When it's cold outside, it's cold in the range. Or when it's 100 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. All right, now, you guys got a classroom there, too. Are you doing classes? Yes, we do education. It's really picked up quite a bit. So we do a lot of uh, basic classes for people who have never shot a firearm before. We do a basic rifle class. We do a an introduction to handgun, introduction to shotgun, clay target sports. And then we do a thing called real-world shotgun. Um, all those classes are... You know, less than seventy-five dollars for somebody wow. to come out and get into them. It includes everything. They don't need to bring anything. They just show up and we get them out there and get them. Oh, so wait a minute. Under seventy-five bucks, does that include the firearm? Yeah, everything. Firearm, ammo, range, the whole deal. Everything they need for an introduction class. 
So wow. to, to be able to get them in and get their, their whistle wet and what they want yeah. to do. And then they can move up to different levels from there. But the, the introduction classes have been our most successful. The introduction to hand today is $69, includes everything. They shoot four or five different firearms depending on, on what we have that day. So they get to shoot a 22 caliber and a 9 millimeter and a 38 special and uh, get to try single action, double action, and revolver, and then they get to shoot automatics. So it's it's nice for them to kind of get an idea of, of what they can look forward to if they're going to get more into shooting or if they're going to defend themselves or what they want to do. That's a great class because it gives them a lot of experience and a lot of different things, a wide variety of things. That's kind of cool. It does. It really also helps them make educational purchases. You know, instead of just buying whatever somebody told them to go out and buy, then they get to try the revolver and the handgun. And at the beginning of the class, we ask all the students if they think they're going to like the revolver better or the semi-auto better. And every time at the end of the class, it switches 180. <laughs> Is that right? They were wrong yeah. 100 times. That's hilarious. Uh-huh. And then we see, you know, the CCW that that you're doing. Yeah. We're seeing a lot more people coming in to do that and practice to get their CCW. So. You know, that must be success in San Diego to be able to see how many people are actually coming in to do that now, where it used to be you'd have one person every six every, months. Every four or five months, yeah. yeah. You now you've now you got a bunch. The other it's interesting thing in San Diego is I know Sheriff Gore is now considering making it. Right now you can have three guns on your permit, and he's considering uh, raising that to six. Oh, is that determined by the county? That's determined by the county, yeah. I mean, huh. it's, it, it's in the statute, but now, for example, up in Orange County, they can have ten. So the sheriffs are just kind of doing what they're doing. But my, the word I got is that the sheriff's department is strongly considering making a change this year to six. What, what does it hurt being able to do that if you've got to go pay to it, qualify for it? It with doesn't it? hurt at all, but it's just a matter of them making, oh, well, don't get me started because in my opinion, the Second <laughs> Amendment is your permit. You shouldn't have to genuflect in front of a government authority and pay them a fee to exercise a constitutionally protected right. But that's a whole different conversation, and we'll be here a long time. We never time. saw your face get that red before. Yeah, I know. It just, <laughs> just irritates quick. me no, no end. But that said, I mean, I, I, what's nice about that is I am seeing, you know, Gore has been re- very resistant to the whole CCW thing for a long time. But at some point, you see the handwriting on the wall. When you got 56 counties now out of the 58 that are issuing, and what and where is it? San Francisco, L.A., right? Everybody else is issuing in some form. And every year it seems more and more of them are pushing closer and closer to shall issue. What I'm seeing San Diego do, and I'm hoping it's true, is nudge it closer and closer to shall issue as they have the – it seems to – I don't know this for a fact. It seems to me like what he's doing is adding capability to process the permits – and as he adds capability, he's opening it up a little bit more, rather than opening it up and having getting bombed and not having enough people to process it. I, I see that too. I, yeah. I, yeah. So I'm encouraged by that. I really am encouraged by that. So that'll be cool. And hopefully it'll bring more business in. Well, I think we just ran out of time, All right. judging by the banger over there. Thank okay. you very much, guys, for coming. I really appreciate Thank it. You, Thank Joel. you, Joel. You're Thanks quite welcome. Have a, great, have a great show and have a great week. You too. Thank Thanks. You too. You're welcome. Thank you again very much for listening and for supporting Gun Guy TV. I'm very, very grateful. Now, if you're going to be on Patreon, I want you to stick with me because I'm going to start the second half of the podcast. If you're listening on your favorite podcast player or to the public version on a YouTube channel or video channel, then we're going to wrap it up here. And I want to thank you very much for all of your support. Have a wonderful week. And wherever you go, whatever you do, please be safe. You've been listening to the Gun Guy TV podcast. 